We left off the last video in the series talking about incremental loading. Now we're going to take a little bit of a shift into change data capture or CDC. It's a little bit of a related topic to what we were doing with incremental loading, but slightly different. So I'm going to hop right into Panoply and show the setting inside the data sources advanced setting menu. And there's a box right next to enable CDC or change data capture. Now this particular feature is specific at this point in time to Microsoft SQL Server. So if you're pulling data from a SQL Server table as your source, then this feature will work for that particular data source, but maybe not for others, most likely not. So this requires also having change data capture enabled within the Microsoft SQL Server platform itself. So we're gonna check that box. When you first do this, if you do not have change data capture enabled within SQL Server, you're going to get a red error message at the top of this section that says that Panoply was not able to detect CDC enabled within the platform. So I'm going to actually jump over to SQL Server and show you what we what we need to do. Two step process here. First is we need to enable change data capture within the database where the table is located. So in my example, I have a database called SYMP demo and a uh, executable function, a stored procedure here, uh, actually function that is gonna go and change the, uh, the settings so that it becomes enabled for the database. Then we need to enable it for each table where we want change data capture to work. So in this case, that table also exists under the SYMP demo database. And then I'm executing another function here where I am going to, excuse me, I should say this is kind of a stored procedure. This is a stored procedure that's going to look for the table in the schema DBO. This is that demo underscore incremental loading table. I'm going to leave the role null and I'm not going to assign it a different file group. Okay, so you can specify a specific role and a file group, and it is recommended that you use a different file group, a separate file group for your change tables as opposed to the ones for your source tables. And then we're going to set, set um, support net changes equal to one and then execute that script. At that point, change data capture is enabled for that table. There is also a way to specify which columns you want tracked as part of the change data capture. I haven't indicated that here, so all columns will be tracked. One difference from the last video is that I did not have a primary key on the ID field in the demo table, and now I do. So it is recommended that you have a primary key on the table where you have CDC enabled. All right, that should do it. Everything should be enabled. If you go into the table section of your database, and you go to system tables, you'll be able to see a change, a tr a basically change tracking table created as this underscore CT at the end of it. And when I go and just look at everything that's in that table, you'll see that there is tracking now, of course, where I've made changes. So in the example I was giving, I was doing tennis rackets and I've got Yonix in there and Babolat and, and Wilson rackets where I've made uh, incremental changes to them and they have been tracked with a uh, column that is the the start time basically it's in binary format of when the change occurred and there's a function sitting behind behind the scenes here i won't get into the details of how all of that works but in essence panoply is going to go and see when was the last time i loaded data and has there been changes to the data since that last time and if so let's apply those changes very similar to the way that incremental loading works, except we're going to be using the CDC function within SQL Server to do this. All right, so let's head back into Panoply and we'll load it up. I've enabled change data capture. We're not going to truncate the table, right? Because we're now we're just keeping track of changes. Very similar to the way incremental loading worked with a revision date, but it's using the CDC ability within SQL Server. And then I'm just going to scroll up to the top and when I do that, there will be a button up there called Save Changes, and then that will change to Collect Data, and we're going to collect the data. All right, the collection process is finished now. I fast forward so that you didn't have to wait for it to get completed, but it only took about 45 seconds for it to run, which is pretty fast. 
of course, most of that time is spent connecting to the database, pulling over the changes, and then setting the data in the new database. Even large data sets will process rather quickly here. So we're going to go back to the collection history and look at the manual collection section. And you'll see that one table was affected and three rows were updated. Now, this is a little bit different from the last video in that I did, in fact, update all three records. I added a V2 to the Wilson Blade 98, a plus symbol to the Babolat Pure Arrow, and a weight 320 grams to the VCore Pro. So let's head back over to Panoply and check out those changes. Actually, I take that back. We're going to go into Deep Beaver and ping that database select the records from it and see if those changes occurred. So let's go ahead and cancel any running queries that I currently have on that particular table. And we'll go ahead and rerun that query and see what sort of information we're going to get from it here. So running it very quickly here, it should ping pretty fast and we'll see what data we get back. If we don't, of course, we can always go in and just view the data ourselves and see what sort of data is sitting in that table. Hopefully we should see an update to the information that's there and uh, get back the records that we changed. So we see the uh, Babel Up Pure Arrow Plus, the V2, and the 320G. Looks exactly the way that I wanted it to look. All right, so recapping really quick. So we need to go into the Microsoft SQL Server database change the database or update the database so it can do change data capture, CDC, enable change data capture on the table, and then go into the data source settings in Panoply and enable change data capture there as well. That's, that's it in a nutshell. That's how to do it. All right, that's it for this video. I'm going to go on to scheduling workflows next or scheduling jobs within Panoply.